a simple solar panel, just sitting under the sun, yet it's generating enough energy to charge your phone, even your laptop. Now imagine this, but bigger, much bigger. What if we covered an entire desert with solar panels? Could we power the whole world? The answer is more complicated and more exciting than you'd think. This tiny 400 gram foldable solar panel on a clear spring day, it delivers up to 10 watts of power. I tested it using a power bank with a digital display. Charging a 24,000 milliamp hour power bank from zero takes time, sure, but we're getting free energy. That's impressive. The sun is the largest and most stable energy source we can access from Earth. It's like a massive fusion reactor that's been running non-stop for 4.6 billion years. And the best part? It sends us free energy continuously and will keep doing so for billions of years more. Think about this. If we could convert all sunlight photons into electricity, just one second of solar energy would power all of humanity for 2.5 hours. One one second equals energy for 9,000 human years, and the sun keeps delivering that energy without pause. And that's exactly why almost all life on Earth depends on the sun's energy. Plants race each other to reach the light because they use it to produce glucose, their food. That food forms the very base of the entire food chain. During photosynthesis, sunlight is converted into chemical energy inside plants. It gets stored in glucose molecules. Then plants, or the animals that eat them, break down that glucose and use its energy in their cells. Actually, solar panels, much like plants, produce energy from sunlight. But instead of photosynthesis, they rely on a different effect, the photovoltaic effect. The photons hitting a solar panel excite the electrons inside the material. These energized electrons jump to higher levels, and if there's an electric potential, they start flowing through a circuit. When electrons break free and begin to move, they leave behind an electron hole. This hole attracts other electrons. As a result, a continuous flow forms in the system, generating electricity. If we connect a battery to this system, we can store solar energy. Just like plants store glucose, the energy builds up and becomes available when needed. And it's not just batteries. You can connect home appliances, electric cars, water pumps, even satellites to the system. With the right circuit, anything can run on solar energy. Using solar energy is not a new idea for humanity. The first use dates back to the 7th century BC. Civilizations used shiny surfaces to focus sunlight and started fires with it. According to legend, Archimedes used polished bronze shields to focus sunlight and set Roman ships on fire. The story is debated, but the idea is powerful. The real breakthrough began in 1839 with a 19 year old scientist. His name was Alexandra Edmond Becquerel. He discovered that light could generate electricity and this opened the door to the photovoltaic effect. In his father's lab, Becquerel placed platinum electrodes into a solution containing silver chloride. He shined light on it and noticed that an electric current was generated. Semiconductors, not fully conductive, not fully insulating, but with a bit of heat, light, or tiny amounts of additives, they can become millions of times more conductive. That's why they are at the heart of modern electronics. Take silicon or silicium. It's the backbone of electronics. Silicon Valley even takes its name from it. This element has tunable conductivity and is the most widely used and reliable semiconductor. Today, we use not just pure elements, but also compound semiconductors. Combinations like aluminum plus arsenic or gallium plus phosphorus are found in today's most efficient solar panels. The biggest problem with solar panels has always been efficiency, but over time, the earliest selenium panels worked at just 1% efficiency. Today, we have systems exceeding 20%. So how did we get here? So what does efficiency really mean? It's simple. The ratio between the energy we put into a system and the useful energy we get back. But because of the laws of thermodynamics, this ratio can never be 100%. No system can ever be 100% percent efficient because energy cannot be created from nothing and in every transformation some energy is lost as heat 
vibration, or another unusable form. That's the second law of thermodynamics. In solar panels, efficiency is measured by how much of the sunlight hitting the panel surface is converted into electricity. But it's not just the panel, atmosphere, time of day, and panel angle also affect the outcome. Most of the energy from the sun is either reflected or absorbed by the atmosphere. And of the light that reaches the panels, only a portion is actually absorbed. Then, that energy is converted to direct current. And as it travels to our homes, some is lost again. In nuclear reactors, only 28% of the energy from each fission reaction ends up charging your phone. With solar panels, it's around 2.3%. So yes, there's a big efficiency gap. But solar is free, while nuclear is costly and risky. That popular idea we always hear. If we cover the Sahara Desert with solar panels, we can power the entire world. Yes, on paper, it's possible. Because the solar energy hitting the Sahara is enormous, but energy alone isn't the whole story. So what's the catch? To bring such a massive project to life, we'd need over two quadrillion dollars in investment. And it's not just about installing panels. Cleaning, maintenance, security, and distribution of the energy are all serious challenges. Let's say we produced all that energy in the Sahara, but how would we deliver it to Argentina, Australia, or Kamchatka? Depending on the type of cable, there's a 3% to 7% loss per 1,000 kilometers. And with undersea cables, that loss gets even higher. The clear leader in solar energy is China. They currently produce 834 terawatt hours per year, and that number is growing every year. So they're not just producing, they're also shaping the future of solar technology. But here's the truth. No country should depend entirely on a single energy source, especially if that source is something toxic like coal or oil, because that dependency brings major risks, both economically and ecologically. Population is rising, technology is evolving, and together they're multiplying energy demand. Unfortunately, this demand is still being met by coal and natural gas. So with time, more carbon is released, more nature is destroyed. What we need for clean energy isn't just technology. The real need is visionary leaders and well-educated people who can carry out this transformation, scientists, engineers, and a conscious society to support them. I truly believe solar energy is an amazing technology. It's becoming more efficient every year and more affordable. So it's no longer a luxury. It's a necessity, especially not investing in it locally would be pure madness for any country.